everyone welcome back to interlipads power bi series in today's session we will tell you how to install power bi so before we move on with our live session please subscribe to our channel and also if you want upcoming updates please hit the bell icon and also leave a like if you enjoy our content now i'll show you how to install power bi on your windows 10 desktop for that all you need to do is open a browser and i'm using google chrome in google chrome what you need to do is open the Microsoft Power BI website. So I type Microsoft Power BI, click the first link over here and this page comes up. And here you will always find an option, start for free. What this means is that you can download the Power BI desktop for free. And then if you need a subscription account, you can continue it further. So I will start for free. And now I will find this pop up. And now this is another option that I get here, download for free. So click over here and now this pop-up menu appears and you have two options over here so and as we know that power bi is a product from microsoft you can directly download it from the microsoft store so open microsoft store by doing this the product will download automatically and install on its own and once that is done you will see this the pr this product is installed and you can launch it directly from here as i had already installed my product i was not going through all that process so i will launch the product directly now power bi desktop will open now once it's open a menu will appear and you will have to fill in your credentials. After that, click on sign in and here you will have to use your professional account. I'll be using the account of a friend of mine. So sign in. Now I'll have to enter the password. Unfortunately, I have a password. So we have signed into Power BI Desktop and this is how Power BI Desktop looks like. As we have discussed, there are three different views in Power BI Desktop. Report view, data view and model view. In addition to that, you have three different menus. In the home menu, you have these options. You have get data, enter data, edit queries, new page, new visual, buttons, and all of that. So what you can do is, I mean, before starting the process of creating a report in Power BI Desktop, you need to import data into it first. And for doing that, you need to click on get data. Once you click on get data, you will find these many options. Now, what does this mean? This means that Power BI can take in data from a huge number of sources. I mean, it doesn't have to be a particular Excel file. It can be anything. As you can see, you can click on more over here. Now a list will appear. Now these are the different sources which are compatible with Microsoft Power BI desktop. So you can take it directly from files, Excel, CSV, XML, JSON, PDF, anything. You can take it from directly databases. All these databases are fine. You can directly take in Power BI files which have a .pbix extension. You can take it from Azure, other online sources and other files that include RScript, Python, ODBC, Spark. I mean, any kind of data can be ingested over here and this will work absolutely fine. Now, this is the beauty of Power BI desktop or you can click on enter data and enter your data manually. You will find this option column. You can input the column and then enter values as per as your requirement. You can simply edit it and then load it. You also have edit queries option here. You can, once you have created a table, you can edit queries and you can use queries to extract specific information from that table. Or you can click over here from marketplace. You have to, you will find these options. These are different visualizations. You can take it directly from the Microsoft website. It's absolutely free to download or from my organization. If see, because we don't use power BI as of now, we don't have any custom visuals. You can use custom visuals and under my organization, you simply have to click it and then extract the visual directly. You can also switch your themes over here. And after that, now I will give you an overview of all the views that we have. First comes report view. Now this is where actually the report is created. In report view, you have two specific panes over here, the visualization pane and the fields pane. In visualization pane, you find these many visualization options. Once you enter a data set, you can visualize it with these many options. You have different things, stacked bar chart, column chart, clustered bar chart, clustered column chart, 100% stock bar chart. As per your requirement, you have many other things and you can use any of it. You also have line and star column chart when you have multiple parameters in your table and if you want to show a graph of multiple things you can use all of this you can also use donut charts pie chart scatter chart and you don't have to worry i will tell you exactly how to use these things in our next demo you can also take data directly from r script visuals and python visual you can create your reports in these visuals also all these options are available to you and 
all you need to do click on a visual and once you have data in it all your parameters will appear over here in this fields pane and you can directly select a parameter and drag it over the axis on which you want to project it there will be two axes x and y and you can put it directly over here and there are other options also you can add data fields over here add data values over here and these are the filters if you want to apply also in addition we have these options and all this will be active when we enter some data set that is the only reason why this is not active right now but i will tell you i will give you an overview you have the title thing over here you can enter a title you can customize your background the lock aspect general things you can give a border visual header and all those things and analytics is not available for this visual as we have not entered any data once that is done next comes data view here you can edit your data you can manage it with query editing tools edit your queries and once you have parameters in your data you can manage those parameters directly from here and then we have this modeling view what you can do in the modeling view is that suppose you have a big report and you have to break it down to make it more understandable or break down into modules so what you can do you can simply enter the data over here and break it down i will show you how to do that so this is how the power bi desktop basically looks like in our next demo i will generate a report and tell you how exactly can we work in microsoft power bi desktop now that we have installed power bi let us understand how data sets and data types work the data that you import from other sources needs to be typed correctly in the first place plus you might also have to change the data types as different sources may have different data types now major question arises where is this data stored in power bi data is mostly stored in fact tables and dimension tables a fact table holds the data to be analyzed and a dimension table stores data about the ways in which the data in the fact table can be analyzed now it is really important to note that these tables are connected and work in sync with each other now when we talk about tables it is a sure thing that there will be data relationships right how can we manage them now don't we think before managing them it is necessary to create them in the first place so if there are no null values and duplicate rows in those facts and dimension tables you can create data relationships and there are two ways to do that in power bi either you can do it manually or you can use power bi's inherent auto detect feature what happens in the auto detect feature is that power bi traverses through your data directly and finds potential data relationships and creates them on its own now let's see how data relationships can be managed data relationships can be managed with primary and foreign keys what are primary keys then a primary key is a special relational database table column which is specifically designated to uniquely identify all table records but a foreign key is defined in a second table but refers to the primary key in the first table and the relationship between these two keys is the stronghold of how tables are connected for managing data relationships even better power bi equips users with cross filtering the cross filter direction of relationships in data sets affects how power bi treats the tables in visualizations and reports there are two types bidirectional and single directional bidirectional cross filtering allows modelers to determine how they want filters to flow for data using relationships between tables and single directional cross filtering will filter one table based on another table just a quick info guys Intellipad provides Power BI online certification training in partnership with Microsoft mentored by industry experts the course link is given in the description below so guys we have come to the end of our session i hope you all enjoyed it for any questions that you have related to coding you can mention it in the comment sections below so thank you so much for attending this session and meet you in another session